my name is Danielle Frederick. I'm the Youth Services Coordinator at the Watson Library. I'm here with Danielle Durr, who is our manager at the Watson Library. And this is going to be our program called So Easy. So it is a hand sewing tutorial course over some basic hand sewing techniques. Um, and I'm going to be showing you how to do the different stitches, the different techniques, and we're going to have Danielle do those along with uh, along with me because she's kind of learning how to sew. I've never touched a needle and thread before. Yes. So she's um, so she's a beginner. She's going to probably be asking some questions that you guys at home might have, and hopefully I'll be able to answer those while I'm teaching you guys how to sew. Okay. So right here we have all of our tools. First we have our fabric. I picked a white one because it's easy to see, and we also have some thread. I picked red thread because it's just super easy to see your stitches. Um, I also have a needle threader, some embroidery scissors, which are really good for cutting small bits of thread. I have our needles, some straight pins. Um, I, it's generally nice to have a ruler. I usually carry a protractor with me in my sewing kit just because it's small. So if, it, if you have a ruler, that's fine. I just have a protractor today because it's going to serve as a straight edge to make a line. Some buttons, a thimble. Some fabric scissors that are larger in case we need to cut the fabric in half. And I also have two marking tools. I have Taylor's chalk and I have a water and air soluble pen. You can use either one of those. It just <laughs> My book fell. You can use either one of those. It just really depends on um, what you want to do. So when you have a light fabric like this, it's good to use the watercolor marker. Um, but when I have a dark fabric, I much prefer to use the Taylor's chalk because it shows up really easily on the dark fabric. Okay, so I've got my thread. It's already cut to uh, a good length. Generally, when you're cutting thread and you're hand sewing, the best thing you wanna do is start from your wrist and go to your elbow, and you don't wanna really exceed longer than like that. I don't know if Sunny can see that. She's filming right now. So it's about maybe a foot in length. Um, and that's, that's, that's a really good length to work with, you know, because you don't want to get too much and get it tangled. So I'm going to show you guys how to thread this thread through the eye of the needle. Um, so, yeah, when you want to thread your needle through the eye, basically, like, you want to find the opening in the eye of the needle and take your thread. My thread, as you can maybe or maybe not see, is a little bit thread frayed. So one thing that helps is if you take your embroidery scissors and cut that thread at an angle because then it comes to a little point and makes it slightly easier to thread that needle through the eye which even now I'm still having a little bit of trouble but I've managed to get it through and it's on there pretty good um, I've also this is gonna be really gross I've also seen people lick the thread you can do that I don't see any harm in that as long as we're not like sharing thread with people because that would be gross. But if you're really bad at threading a needle through, you can also use this tool called a needle threader. Um, it has a basically it has like a really really big eye made of wire, so it slips through this tiny little needle eye super easily like that, and it allows you to slip the thread through this great big needle eye, so that all you have to do is take your needle and slide it off the needle threader and you have a perfectly threaded needle. Okay, so now that we've gone over how to thread our needle, I'm going to go over our thimble, which is this little metal tool right here. Um, a lot of people don't like thimbles because they say, oh, it's really hard to hand sew with a thimble on, but it's actually incredibly important to wear your thimble while hand sewing because um, with your dominant hand, you hold your needle with your index finger and your thumb. And basically when you're sewing, you have the fabric, you're pushing it, the needle through the fabric, and this finger, your middle finger, is always going to be pushing that needle through. So you want to have something to protect your finger. Because if you're working on a fabric that's really like thick and rough, you run the risk of actually puncturing your finger with the needle, and that is horrible. So basically, the thimble is just a way to protect your finger. Um, so it's important to use one that's really comfortable, that fits you well. I personally like these metal thimbles because I just find them really easy to use. This one fits my finger well I have another one that I don't really like as much because like this little rubber one doesn't fit my finger quite as well and these little gaps I have a tendency to like push with the side of my finger and so the needle will often hit me on this gap so I don't use one like this anymore 
Um, I really like this one. You can also make them out of scrap leather and basically take a piece and cut it to, uh, to the shape of your finger and stitch it together. Um, I don't have one of those. I want one of those, but I really do like them. So yeah, it may be a little annoying to learn to sew with a thimble at first, but it's incredibly important for your, just, it helps your sewing and it's incredibly important for your safety. So now that we've gone over that, I'm going to show you guys some basic stitching techniques. First, we're going to learn how to do the running stitch. So the first thing that I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make a straight line. And I'm going to do about, I'm going to make it about six inches. I might not stitch all the way down that line just because that might take a long time. But as you can see, we have a nice straight line on our fabric. So I'm going to be doing our running stitch to follow along this line. Now, what's cool about this marker is it is water soluble, um, which means that if you take a little bit of water, it just goes away. So if I were, to, if this were a finished piece, I could just erase it with water, like throw it in the washing machine and it's done. Um, so that's one thing I really like about these. And also I really like these water soluble markers for beginners because it works just like a pen. It's a little bit easier to hold than the tailor's chalk. So I really, really like these for beginners. And um, this particular supply and pretty much all the supplies that we have today, you can get at any craft store or um, like a big box store. Um, I personally like to get everything at the craft store or a fabric shop just because they tend to have everything that I need all there and all the supplies and brands that I like. Okay, so our first step into doing our back stitch, we wanna have your needle threaded. You wanna have your thimble on. And then your needle and thread are always going to be in your dominant hand. Your fabric is going to be in your non-dominant hand. And um, the way you start the running stitch is I like to take a knot in my fat in my needle, uh, my thread. Some people will say it's bad practice to have knots in your hand stitching, but this is just for fun. It's for practice. It's okay. And I make a few little knots in my fabric in my my thread. I keep saying fabric because what I'm gonna do is take the needle from the back side of the fabric, and I don't know if you can see that on camera, but you can kind of see where I made the mark, so it's gonna be really easy to see. So I'm gonna go from the back side of the fabric, pushing my needle through the fabric with that thimble, and bring it back. So that knot is gonna keep it from going through. So when you do the running stitch, um, the best way for me to explain it is you have your fabric in your non-dominant hand right here and then your needle in your dominant hand and now that your needle is coming up through the right side of your fabric so the fab so this side that we're working on right now is the right side um the back side would be the wrong side you're going to push it on this line right through the fabric and then come up just like a couple like just like a millimeter ahead of where you were so like it goes through the fabric and then out through the fabric and then you push it down into the fabric again and up the other side and you're just following that straight line and you just do that for a few millimeters push the needle through and pull it through and so it's going to kind of make like a dotted line when you do that so basically this kind of stitch is just in up in the fabric out the other side through the fabric out the other side and it's just going to kind of create that little zigzag effect. I think Danielle needs something. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's one of those things, like, it's really actually kind of, like, difficult to kind of grasp the needle and your thread all at once and everything, kind of get everything done. Um, I know I make it look easy, but I've also been doing this a long time. So That's why I'm here. But yeah, you have the right idea. Like, you've got the right idea with doing it like, you know, it's almost kind of like weaving. You know how with weaving you do under, over, under, over? It's kind of that same concept. You just go down through the fabric, up the other side, through the fabric, up the other side. And it just makes this like really neat, nifty little dotted line effect. Um, and this particular stitch is really nice for if you want speed. Um, so if you're just like kind of like, it's a good decorative stitch also. I know I use it a lot in hand embroidery. 
which actually that's what this cloth was left over from. It's left over from like an embroidery project I did. Um, so it's a good like little decorative stitch. It's also like a very like if you can keep your lines a very straight stitch. It's a really good consistent stitch. Um, but one of the disadvantages is it's not a very strong stitch. So I wouldn't recommend it if you're trying to seam two pieces of fabric together, unless you're doing what is called basting, which is just putting a temporary uh, stitch in your fabric to keep two pieces of fabric together. Because um, so if I was basting this fabric to another fabric and I was trying to see how it looked together. To undo it, I would just clip this knot and pull the thread out and the fabric would be. So I apart. shouldn't start hemming my dresses with this stitch? No, the last stitch I'm gonna show you is gonna be a good hemming stitch. <laughs> um, but this one is really good, you know, mostly as a, I would say as a decorative stitch, but also as a speedy stitch. Now I do use this to, st to stitch two fabrics together, but I, am, I apply it with another stitch that I'm going to show you guys in a minute, and that's called the back stitch. So, okay. So our next stitch is called a back stitch. And um, when I was talking about the running stitch and saying, oh, this is not a really strong stitch, it's not good for like, you know, making like something like really like sturdy, constructive, or like doing seams. That's kind of where the back stitch comes in because it is the strongest hand stitch you can do. Okay, yeah, so your back stitch, you're just kind of inserting your needle through the fabric and coming up a little ways ahead of yourself, like a millimeter or two, like you would for a running stitch. But the difference is you put the needle back through where you started, go th from behind the fabric, then pop up just like, not even like a whole millimeter, like half a millimeter ahead of yourself, up through the front of the fabric, and it's gonna make a nice straight line. Um, and also if you're seaming two pieces of fabric together, it makes a really, really strong stitch. So Danielle asked like, oh, what would be a good stitch to like sew pieces of like fabric together or like sew a dress? This is, this is actually a stitch that I've used to make clothes by hand. Um, the downside of this stitch is like, while it's really strong, it's very slow. Like you can already see, like I'm going a lot slower than I did before with the running stitch. So one thing I like to do whenever I'm actually like sewing something together, like some clothes or like pillows, I have some pillowcases that I made this way um, at home, is I do what's called a running back stitch. So it kind of combines the two stitches together, which I can show you. So with a running back stitch, you want to make the motions of a running stitch from going through the fabric, up the other side, through the front of the fabric, around the back of the fabric, through the fabric, up. So as you can see, we've made a running stitch. But to keep this stitch nice and strong like a back stitch, on your last running stitch, you come and do a back stitch like that. And then you finish out by just, you know, doing some more running stitches. So, oop, I made my stitches a little too big right there. But yeah, you want to try and be consistent with your stitch sizes. Sometimes I struggle with that. But yeah, you just do some more running stitches and then a single back stitch. And that's how you do a running back stitch. So I really like both of those stitches put together to put something together. Sorry, my line's not as straight. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I'm very consistent with my sizing. It's, it's okay. It takes practice. Like, I, I started off really consistent with this one, and then I was, like, getting ner a little nervous with the camera right in my face, and I was like, <laughs> just, like, my stitches got a little crazy because I got nervous. Um, so I, I completely understand that. What's the best way to hold the thread to not to keep it from falling out when you pull it um what i like to do is like i kind of have i have my needle between my index finger and my thumb and basically like my thumb is kind of like my, my needle my, the eye of my needle is like resting right here on the thimble and my thumb is just like right on top of that thread so like it is holding pretty tight um so that like whatever thread i'm using and everything i'm kind of just like you know pushing coming up pushing coming up pushing coming up and then once I'm ready to let that needle through I let it go 
and then like I'll take my finger my my ring finger and my pinky finger to hold the thread as it comes out to where I'm not like um, losing it yes so that's my I see. little trick <laughs> I don't know if that's um how it's officially done but that's just what I like to do but yeah, you can you can see like my stitches. It's like here's where I was feeling confident, and here's where I got nervous because they all got super crooked because I was just like right up in the camera. <laughs> so we all get nervous. Yes. <laughs> so yes, but yours looks really nice. Thank you. You're welcome. That's okay. That happens from time to time. You just kind of pull it out of the needle and out of the thread. But yeah, that looks really good. I'm proud of myself. Good job. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to apply. Uh, some of these techniques to seam two pieces of fabric together um, and the stitch I want to go ahead and use is going to be that running back stitch because it's going to be really good for showing strength but it's also a nice speedy stitch for seaming things together by hand. Alright so I've tied a knot on the end of my thread and now I'm going to go ahead I have my fabric in my non-dominant hand and I'm going to go ahead and start with a single back stitch because that's just how I like to start my projects because it just makes sure that the two pieces of fabric are held securely together. Make sure you're holding both pieces of fabric so you don't accidentally like miss it like I just did. And if it gets wrapped around the corner and everything, you just kind of take your needle, push it off, pull it on through. Okay. So now I'm going to do some running stitches through there. And once, I like to do like four or five running stitches, pull it through, and then go back with a back stitch. Just to sort of secure everything. Drop the needle. So, yeah, that's just probably like this. Like this, the easiest way to do a seam like this is you know just a few running stitches and some back stitches, a few running stitches and some back stitches. So we're gonna go ahead and finish up our fabric and then we're going to show you guys how to hem the seam that we made. So when you guys get to the end of your seam, the way to sort of close out that stitch is to just finish it with a single back stitch. Um, you are more than welcome to finish it with a knot. Sometimes I like to do that too. I'll show you guys that also. You just slip it through, make a little knot, and then I just kind of go back and kind of weave my needle through a few stitches pull it out and then I take my little snips and I cut the thread near the edge of the fabric and so you guys can see it makes a pretty good seam so that's pretty well held together um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys how to take this little seam and kind of just hem over it. Alright, so to get our seam, what we have to do is we're going to have to cut a little bit of this fabric. So we're going to take, well, I like to use the fabric that's like um, basically this one that faces toward the left. So like when I, un like if I had an iron and I ironed open this seam, if I pressed it, this piece of fabric over here on the left is the one I'm going to be cutting. And I'm just going to cut, I think it's about like this seam was about a quarter inch away from the thread, so I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch off, which might not be the neatest cut here, because these embroidery scissors are not my good scissors, but oh well. That's why we're going to cover this seam with this piece. Do you want those? Are these better? No, they both came out of the same, the same pack. I bought these at... Uh, a store I don't usually shop at because I need it some. <laughs> okay. So you got yours uh, cut? Mm -mm. Okay, we'll get yours cut. Um, 
It usually helps to um, have really, really good fabric scissors. Normally what I do is like I have really nice fabric nippers because um, it's important to use fabric, uh, pretty much like anything like design for fabric because they're gonna be nice and sharp. They're gonna be more precise. Um, these are for embroidery, but they're better to cut thread. But since my seam was really, really small and tiny, I wanted something with like a nice tiny tip to cut. Um, so if you have like some fabric scissors with like a really, really fine point, that's awesome. Because they are the best. Okay, so once you have your little seam cut, you're gonna take the other edge and fold it over. And if you want, you can take some pins. Since this is such a small seam, it probably won't take more than just one or two pins. And you just pin the fabric through, kind of in the same motion as you would with a running stitch. You just kind of pin it. Yeah, sometimes you poke yourself, sorry. Pin it through the bottom and out through the top. Pin it through the bottom and out through the top. Um, there's also, if you do not like straight pins, uh, clips which I only have one today. Um, Cause just honestly, when I'm hand sewing, I prefer to use straight pins. And when I'm using my machine, I just prefer to have the clips. Um, Cause I just find the clips easier to remove while I'm like pushing through the machine really, really fast. How many should I use? Um, I have two, should I two, use Two's probably fine. Oh. I, just have, I just have three to show them like how um, it's closed and everything. Cause like as soon as like my needle is good to go, I'm taking this one right out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tie my little knot in my needle. So after I get that done, I'm going to take that third pin out because I really don't need it. Can I tie a knot today? I hope so. And I usually like to double knot this particular thread because it's pretty thin. Sometimes I even triple knot it or I just do the, um, the back stitch. But if you're just starting out, it's just easier to knot everything. My hands are fiddly. Okay, so this particular stitch is a little bit more difficult than our other stitches because um, it's kind of got a particular way of going about. So you want to start on your right side of your fabric, like right hand side. Um, and basically you're going to take your needle and you're going to push it right through this little flap, like right under the flap. And pull it through. Oh no. You want to make sure you catch quite a few threads in the fabric. And then when you go to dive back down into doing this particular stitch, you want to catch it like right along the edge. Catch a few threads on it and kind of come up like you would do a running stitch. So it's almost like in a diag, it's like a kind of like a diagonal running stitch almost. And this is called a slip stitch because you just slip under a piece of the fabric and you slip it back out. I'm going to catch that real quick. And then you just pretty much repeat the process. It's a little bit more difficult because you really have to make sure that you catch enough bits of the, th the thread of the fabric to get it right, which my fabric's a little bit frayed so I'm catching some of that too. But yeah, you want to kind of think of it as going in like a diagonal motion where you catch the, the edge of the fabric. And then um, once you go down, you catch the edge of the fabric, where do you go? You go back up? You go up? back up. Yeah, because it's gonna, what it's going to do is like you have like your seam in here. And this is basically going to create a hem. That is one of the ways to create a hem. Um, it is not my personal favorite way to create a hem. Because what I actually, but um, basically like this style of hem, when you have a thread that is the same color as your fabric, it creates an invisible seam. It is not my particular favorite way to use a hem. Mine is kind of like this, except um, instead of folding that hem down once, I fold it down twice. And what I like to do, which actually I might do it. I think I'm going to do it. Uh, can I do it this way? I'm going to fold it down one more time just so you don't see those stitches. <laughs> Um, my favorite way to do it is to just fold it down to where I have like this nice little hem and I just kind of come up 
and it's more of like a um a whip stitch which is when you just take the, the, the needle poke it under the fabric poke it up through the other top side of this fabric so it's kind of just more of this motion where you're just under over and going through the very edge which this is actually a stitch I use a lot um, when I'm piecing crochet pieces together um, my thread got so tangled just now Bec and it's called a whip stitch because it just kind of like you know you just whip it around the fabric and it just goes whoosh 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 when I'm doing my whip stitch it's like some people are like oh are you worried about your you know your, your threads peeking out through the other side of the fabric and I'm honestly not because uh, my fat my my thread color is always the same as my fabric so I don't mind doing a whip stitch you can also do a running back stitch like we did because it's just also a super easy way to do a hem um, a lot of people just prefer the slip stitch because when you really really like it's a little difficult but when you master it it's like it's pretty much an invisible stitch when you're doing um, a seam or a hem or, and stuff like that so it's a really nice, it's a really nice stitch to know. Um, but yeah, it is one of the more difficult stitches. And if you do have trouble, you can always just like do your hem with like a running the back stitch or something like that, or even just a running stitch. Cause honestly like hems usually, hem, like with hems, it's not a part of your fabric that's like taking a lot of stress. Like it's not being like pulled a whole lot. It's usually like on the end of a garment just to like hide your seams and stuff. So if you just do a running stitch for a hem, it's not really that big of a deal in my opinion. So now we're gonna show you guys how to sew on a button. And the button I have is just a pretty basic um, four hole little steel button. And I'm gonna be using my red thread and my cloth. So I've already threaded my needle and I've tied a little knot into my cloth. I have a really long tail, so I'm going to snip that real quick. Um, so I have a knot tied onto my button. And what we're going to do is take our thread and our needle. I've got my thimble on. Our button is nicely placed on the fabric where I want it. If you want, you can mark where you want your button on the fabric to be more precise. But since this is just an example, I just kind of have it on my fabric. So you take your needle and go through the back of the fabric you want to poke it through one of the holes in your buttonhole. So I have it through the first hole and then you just poke it through down through the fabric again through the hole that is across from it. Poke it through and then you come through the back again. It's catching on my fabric. Goodness gracious. Okay, so you see how you have it kind of like that? And then you poke it through another hole that is next to that hole. And you poke it in the corresponding hole across from that, up through the back. And you can kind of see where my needle's going here through the back of the fabric now. So as you can see, it's kind of got like this crisscross pattern. And then you just repeat. You poke it through the back, through one buttonhole, poke it through the front, through the hole directly across. So you always want to go directly across? I prefer to, because I feel like it like just makes it stronger. Other people might not uh, do it this way. This is just how I learned how to do it as a kid, because um, uh, I learned to sew by hand. Actually, I checked out books from the library when I was a child. <laughs> And that's how I taught myself how to sew. So I think, like, I, I, I definitely am not, like, an expert or anything. You know, I knew a lot of people who had, like, their grandmas and their moms and stuff show them how to sew. But I just kind of taught myself because I, my, I, had a little, I had a little sibling who was, like, really rough on a lot of my stuffed animals and would rip their arms off. And I wanted to learn how to sew so I could fix my animals. But um, my mom couldn't sew, and so she didn't have time to teach me. My dad didn't know how to sew, so I just picked up a book at the library at school and taught myself how to do it. <laughs> so I did my, not do that yeah. as a child. Oh no, what, what was funny though is like my um... And my, look at me now, my children. Si my sibling decided to start breaking my animals on purpose so that they could put them in these stuffed animal hospitals so I could sew them together. And they would put band-aids on the animals. So my toys would just get broken on purpose. <laughs> 
But yeah, so once you have kind of gotten your button nice and secure, the back of your fabric might be kind of a mess. My back of my fabric is always a mess. Like I said, I'm not an expert, but I try my best. You wanna just push it through a few threads on the back. Oh no. You try not to make a mess like me. Well, okay. That's what happens if your tail is a little too long, it'll catch like that. And then you just tie a little knot. I usually like to do a couple knots through there, like one or two. How do you keep your button like in place? Mine's just flopping around all over the place. Um. It's kind of hard to keep it in place at first. It's definitely very fiddly until you've really got your your threads okay, well now established. It's, now it's, yeah. Okay. It, it's just, just it's just yeah. It's just one of those things you just really gotta hold it um, until you're completely done. Like until like you know it's got a few threads on it to make it feel like ah oh, yes I'm secure. And then once you put the button on the fabric. So yeah. There's our button. And um, one thing I really do like about hand sewing is just like, it's definitely not perfect. Like a lot of things, you know, there's still a lot of room for human error with sewing. Like while you can get like more precise, if you're really, really good, you can get very, very precise stitches and a lot more precise stitches than you would with a machine. But um, one of the things I really like about hand sewing is like, there is a lot of human error and you can kind of like see like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, just like lovingly kind of hand sewn and like imperfect in like a really cute way. Um, and also one thing that's really cool about like learning to sew by hand is like you can really see like your, your progress as like you keep going. So like if you kind of like keep the little pieces that you made that you just... Yeah, progress. See, look how happy she is. She's already progressed just in this video. It's just, it's just a fun way to like see how far you've grown because you can kind of look at it and be like, oh yeah, I remember when I sewed that my very first button? And then you, you know, when you sew your like hundredth button, you're like, wow, that's so much better. It's just like you can, you can really see like um, how much your stitch work has progressed and things like that when you're doing stuff by hand. Whereas with a machine, it's you know, it, it's doing most of the work for you. So it's kind of like you can't really like see it quite as well. But I don't know. That's just my opinion. Okay guys, so that completes our So Easy virtual sewing class. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And if you decide that you wanna progress a little more in sewing and go um, start learning how to machine sew, we actually do have resources for that. We have tons and tons of books on sewing, both by machine and by hand. Um, for like fashion purposes, household purposes, pretty much everything you can want to learn. We also have a lot of online resources, like um, we have a database called Creative Bug, which not only has sewing um, information in it, but also just general like arts and crafts. You can learn how to paint, you can learn how to draw, pretty much any sort of creative thing that you're wanting to learn. We also have, this is kind of related to sewing, but not really, um, we have these knitting kits. And a lot of these hand sewing techniques you do have to apply when you're learning how to knit and crochet because you have to sew pieces together. So if you're looking how to like knit or crochet but you don't know how to sew your pieces together, these are some great concepts that you can use to apply to that work. And um, lastly, if you want to go ahead and start using machines, we do have machines at the Denton Springs Walker Library that you can use. Um, and you can also use the Book a Librarian services to book your appointment at the Idea Lab so somebody can show you how to use the machines. Um, so with that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this class and that you have, or, you know, you're really happy with all the little things you've learned. I know Miss Danielle is really happy with the button that she sewed. So I'm glad that I was able to kind of like sit with you and teach you something new. I'm glad I got to learn something new. Awesome. And we hope you guys have a great time. Bye.